Alpinism has become synonymous with phrases like fast and light, minimalism, and speed versus safety. Alpine style conjures up images of small teams moving quickly in the mountains. With this in mind, the guiding philosophy for our gear considerations video will be lightweight, self-sufficient systems and items that have multiple uses. Alpine climbs range from backcountry rock climbs in a mountain environment to full value winter expeditions that involve huge glaciers, multiple camps, and steep technical snow, rock, and ice. Due to a huge variety in types of trips, your Alpine kit will really depend on six main factors. The time of year, the length of the trip, the technical nature or goals of the trip, the terrain, whether you have snow, rock, or ice, the mode of travel on the approach, whether you're hiking in, skiing in, or snowshoeing in, and the most current weather forecast. Let's start with the pack. The ideal Alpine backpacks depends on the length of the trip. For the majority of Alpine missions here in the lower 48, most parties spend between one and three nights. So our pack considerations will reflect this trip length. An Al Alpine pack should allow you to carry all your overnight equipment and to shrink down for your carries on climbing days that involve technical movement. It's rare to carry a separate summit pack just to wear on the climb. Alpine packs range between 35 liter bags for summertime one night missions, all the way up to 75 liter bags, which can hold food and supplies for a multi-day or a winter climb. There are many Alpine specific packs on the market. You wanna look for a light pack with minimal bells and whistles that has as low a pack weight as possible. Standard features include pack systems that allow ice tools and axes to be carried securely on the outside of the pack, as well as a small zippered pocket that is accessible from the outside to access essentials. Look for compression straps and removable top lids that allow a streamlined version of the pack to be used while climbing. One nice component is a removable back pad that can be used as part of your sleeping system. And if you climb at altitude or in the winter, consider buckles and zippers that are easy to use with gloves. The pack should be constructed of materials that are both lightweight and durable enough to handle technical climbing and still carry the weight comfortably. Lightweight trekking poles can be worth their weight for approaches involving trails or snow. However, they're not very useful in talus fields or places where you need your hands for travel. We love ultra light fiberglass hiking poles that collapse down into multiple pieces that travel in our pack while climbing without sticking out. The Alpine rack includes a small assortment of nuts or stoppers, as well as a single set of camming devices. In the winter time, I rely less on cams as they're heavier and don't provide protection in iced up cracks. An Alpine rack may also include items like pitons, ice screws, and snow protections such as pickets. These items are specific to the route you'll climb. Placement and considerations for these unique items are featured in other Climbing Tech Tip videos. Clothing layers, which are covered in depth in our Alpine video, How to Stay Warm and Dry, will also vary by season. But for most months in the mountains, I'll bring a warm hat or a buff that fits under my helmet and gloves. For my upper body, I have base layer and a puffy insulating layer, as well as a lightweight rain or wind shell. Lower body layers include long underwear base layers and a pair of soft shell pants. Unless I know that there's rain in the forecast, I rarely bring rain pants. Gators are usually left at home unless I'm post holing in deep powder snow and most alpine climbing soft shell pants can be rigged to cinch around the bottom of your boots to avoid needing gaiters. Selection of alpine climbing boots will depend on the season as well as the terrain. Selecting a pair of climbing boots that climb rock well and work with crampons. For summertime alpinism, there are excellent approach shoes on the market that can do the same job as a lighter pair of alpine climbing boots. Crampons, ice tools, and axe selection 
as well as first aid kit considerations will all be covered in other climbing tech tip videos. As far as a rope goes, this will be very specific to the terrain that you will climb. Rope selection will be covered in our Alpine rope considerations video. Personal gear necessities for the Alpine environment include sunglasses, headlamps, sunscreen, and water treatment. The sun can be extremely intense at altitude, and the combination of less atmospheric protection and the reflectivity of the sun on substrates such as snow or light-colored rock can lead to snow blindness and sunburns. High altitude sunglasses, such as wraparound types or with side protection, can help protect your eyes significantly. Sunscreen should be carried in amounts that will cover you for the length of the trip, but that jumbo sized tube are less ideal for the backcountry. Think pocket sized products for alpine climbing trips. Water treatment products come in all shapes, sizes, and costs. For alpine routes, I stick with small and simple treatment solutions like Aquamira, chlorine dioxide treatment, or iodine tablets. Filters like gravity filters and electronic stereo pens are great for big groups or camping trips where speed and weight are less of an issue. Keep it simple with your water treatment. Stoves have come a long ways. For short alpine missions, a small canister stove like a jet boil or MSR reactor are best. Long trips that involve large amounts of snow melting or international alpine expeditions are often better served by a liquid fuel stove. For most short trips, a small titanium pot or spork works well as a bowl and cup for cooking wear. Sleeping bags and tents should be light and compressible. Wear your layers to sleep to get away with a lighter sleeping bag, and down-fitted sleeping bags tend to be ideal for alpine climbs. Single wall bivy shelters come in various options, but will all tend to do the job. A simple and light tent that's versatile for the mountain range where you spend the most time serves you best. There are many other items that may seem essential when you're in the store and looking at all those shiny outdoor toys. However, when you're in the field, think about layers and gears that did not get used. Example, during the coldest part of the day, in the mornings and evenings, you could get away with lighter insulation if you're cooking while wrapping yourself in your sleeping bag. Challenge yourself to get away carrying less. Do you really need those extra things that never left the pack? Lastly, I'll put in a plug for a communication device. This piece of gear depends on where you spend the most time. The pros and cons of mobile phones, locator beacons, satellite phones, or a UHF VHF radio will be discussed in an additional video. All right, we've discussed the initial gear considerations. This climbing tech tip mountaineering series will now take a deeper dive into the alpine world.